Welcome back to Off the Press. This is James Berger with the Bakersfield, California, and my co-host, Russell Johnson. And again, we're having a spirited conversation with Wendy Reed, who is running for the 23rd Congressional District. Uh, and uh, it, it's an interesting district. Uh, it, as you have mentioned earlier, uh, it's pretty spread out uh, from L.A. County down by Lancaster, where you live, up to uh, up through Bakersfield uh, and up into Tulare County to Porterville, where I grew up. Um, so... Uh, it's. Uh, and I remember actually when I was covering uh, the news and the for the paper up in Porterville, uh, Bill Thomas uh, came through every so often to uh, mm-hmm. uh, when he represented the area. And um, so, tell me about obviously this district. If if you just look at the numbers, uh, it leans Republican. It 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 uh, is kind of the yin and yang uh, half of the uh, 21st, which is very uh, Democratic and and Latino. Uh, How do you run a race against, as Russell said, an entrenched uh, Republican uh, in a Republican district as a Democrat uh, and really make an impact, the kind of impact you want? Because I I, I get the sense that that you just want the dialogue to be out there in this race. So... How do you make sure that that dialogue gets engaged in, uh, and that you make a uh, an honorable charge at Mr. McCarthy? What I am talking about is that politics itself is the problem. This whole idea that ideologically we have a red team and a blue team, and because we were raised in a family that loves the kings, we will never ever root for the lions. You know, and forgive me if that is like football and hockey or something. <laughs> you know? we, but we understand. You understand, we understand the point, okay? You know, and so uh, uh, the first thing that I do when people ask my party affiliation is I say, let me remind you, first of all, I am an American, okay? We are supposed to be a United States of America. We are supposed to be living in a community. Okay, we're not supposed to be eternally divided, you know, like uh, two sects of Muslim law. Look at what they're doing to each other. Okay, look what we are doing to ourselves as Americans. And it is so easy for politicians and the political process to profit off of our division, our division be by color, by gender, by religion, by non-religion, by race, by you know economic structure, and absolutely the end of the day, I'm a Republican and I will never vote for a Democrat. Well, I'll tell you what happened to me. I was at the farmer's market over in Ridgecrest, and a man came up and he said, I am a McCarthy supporter, and I have voted for McCarthy every election. And I was prepared to say, that's great. Thank you so much for coming by, you know. <laughs> and he said, yes, I have voted for McCarthy every election, but not this year. I voted for you because I am tired of Mr. McCarthy doing all his politicking on my tax dollar. And he said, and my wife voted for you too. And she <laughs> nodded her head. and that is the story the story is that all the way to the right and all the way to the left we all understand what is broken with our government and it's not government that is broken it is the political process and the politicians who are profiting off of our government and not doing the people's work and we are at a point where we just want to vote the bums out They've done this many times in American history and many times around the planet and other nations, and that's one of these years. I am not a Democrat in the sense that I have uh, provided uh, delivered votes. There are people running whose families have delivered constituencies, and they are owed debts and favors by the Democratic Party or by the Republican Party. I have none of that. In fact, the Democratic Party didn't support my campaign hardly at all. They gave $300,000 to a a candidate running for assembly in a special election, and they gave me $3,000, okay? It's kind of like you open up Christmas, and Grandma gave you five bucks, and you're like, Grandma gave you five bucks, and then you realize the other kids got 20 or 40, and you're like, how come I got five bucks? 
sucks, well, right? It well, like it's because I'm not a politician. I'm not an insider, and they don't want outsiders. They don't want genuine people from the district to run for office. They want their politicians to run for it office. It sounds like maybe you'll be registering to claim the state when this is all done. <laughs> so, um, not to well, claim the state. No party preference. No party preference. So <laughs> let, let me ask you a couple of questions about you know, how you intend to go out there and how you intend to get elected. And then I'll have a follow-up question off something you said, which is, so you got to go out and you got to knock knock on doors. You got to go out and meet people. It sounds like you were at the Ridgecrest Farmers Market, so you're out there tabling, which is an important part of trying to win elections. Are you, and you talked about a $3,000 check compared to the $300,000 <laughs> check. So it's going to be hard for you to get on radio. It's going to be hard for you to get on TV. Um, it, it's but here I am. But here you <laughs> are. Um, and, and then, do you have any plans to fundraise at all, or are you kind of limited to what oh, you've I done Oh, so I did far? fundraise. I got incredible endorsements. If you had visited my website, you would have seen them. And they are there. You can visit afterward, and you can make a contribution. Uh, <laughs> there's a link for that as well, wendyreadforcongress.com. I'm also on Facebook slash Wendy Reed for Congress, and I'm on Twitter, Wendy Reed Tweet, singular. Um, and uh, I uh, got many union uh, endorsements and contributions. Um, I got many individual contributions. Uh, believe it or not, Mr. McCarthy is not as popular uh, in the district or across the country as he used to be. Uh, and many people are an anti-McCarthy vote. Uh, I beat two guys in the primary, and I have met many of those voters and they uh, are planning to vote for me in November. I'm not saying all of them, you know, the whole 15%, but clearly a large number of them, they were not so much for the other Republican candidates they voted for, but they were against McCarthy. So there is a serious block of people who will vote anybody but. Um, it's also a good year for women, although I personally don't cater to voting for somebody because they are your same ethnicity or your same gender. Um, I think that's kind of shallow reason, you know, to vote for people. I didn't vote for Sarah Palin because she was a woman. Um, and so uh, I, I don't think that that should be the be all and end all of your, your voting decision. But there are a lot of people including men, who feel that, uh, particularly fathers of daughters, whom I, I've, I've spoken with, who really do feel that uh, it's egregious that women are 52% of America and only 17% of Congress, and that we just need more women and for the diversity of the thing. Um, I have uh, raised uh, almost $30,000 going into the primary, probably at the end of the day another ten grand by the time that we hit the general um, and uh, it's been enough to do robocalls, to do emailing, uh, to put gas in the car, to uh, you know purchase advertising, to print banners and flyers and business cards and yard signs. And if you want a yard sign, just go ahead and email us at campaign at wendyreadforcongress.com. <laughs> uh, give us your address and we will deliver a yard sign. Um, your phone number is helpful so we can tell you it's in the front yard, um, <laughs> by the front door. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're campaigning the best that we can with limited resources. And to be really honest with you, I'm very happy with that. I am not really disappointed. I think that it is obscene that you should raise a quarter of a million dollars to represent 710,000 people for two years. It's my district. I've lived here for 30 years. There should be uh, uh, forums for people to find out who their candidates are and make a reasonable choice. Uh, Ridgecrest uh, periodical just came out with an endorsement of McCarthy, didn't even mention my name. I learned this morning that something called My Cal City out of California City is hosting candidate forums and not inviting the Democrats <laughs> to participate. So they invited Tom Lackey, but they didn't invite Steve Fox, a former assembly member, right? Uh, when, uh, when my volunteer from Cal City uh, uh, called them and asked whether I had been invited, they said, yes, they couldn't reach me. Ha-ha! 
<laughs> so, um, you know, this is not uh, in any way the kind of free press and open information that our forefathers truly understood, uh, you know, when they made the First Amendment and, and understood that the Fourth Estate was critical to an educated um, uh, electorate uh, who would make smart choices about who to vote for. So I just keep putting one foot in front of the other, Russell. I talk the truth. I hope that people will look into my heart and their hearts and choose somebody that at least is passionate about representing the district more than she is passionate about, you know, being a politician. So I, I'm going to throw a couple of issues at you, and we're running low on time. So I'm ready. Uh, just uh, where do you stand on immigration? Where do you stand on uh, issues such as um, uh, the Second Amendment and issues that are big in this district? Uh, and, and where do you stand and what are your thoughts on the most recent uh, uh, stuff going on in Congress with like the Zika funding and uh, just hit those three issues real quick. Um, let me remind everybody first that as a freshman congressman, um, you know, it's not like I'm going to be writing legislation on these things. I am going to be supporting other uh, candidates who attain office and, and are moving forward on things that I'm committed to. Uh, immigration reform is absolutely necessary. Um, we have many, many things that we uh, treat as uh, evil and uh crimes, uh, we over-incarcerate people, uh, we torture people, we uh, pray, we have predatory uh, systems in, in many places in America uh, where they feel that they have to have a certain minimum quantity of criminals. Uh, and this is how people like Sandra Bland end up dead in their jail cells, okay? Um, we do have a multi-tiered economic system in America that does still rely on perhaps not slavery, although we have tremendous human trafficking and we do have slavery. We have people right now who are enslaved in homes in America uh, through human trafficking, but we also have people who are undocumented workers who contribute billions of dollars in terms of taxes and everything that's being collected under false security numbers, uh, social security numbers, but they never get to apply for those. They never get them back. They don't have civil liberties. They can't call the police if they're robbed or they're beaten because they fear deportation. And yet we have large segments of our economy like the agricultural industry and the building industry and the um, rendering, the, the slaughterhouses and the rendering, which rely, and even hotels, uh, that rely incredibly on this lower caste of, of uh, wages, lower caste of, of rights of people. So we absolutely need to address it. It is egregious. And as you take, uh, which the Republican Party is currently doing, this firm stance against immigration, now you have all kinds of agricultural growers here in the Central Valley who can't get people to work on their fields. Okay, we have vacancies. We've got 100 vacancies here, 300 vacancies there. We asked why, to the gentleman who's explaining this to us, and we said, well, why aren't Americans wanting to work these jobs? Well, they're $10 an hour, they're no benefits, and you have to provide your own transportation out to the field and back. So it's just not the most attractive thing you know, for, for people to do. Maybe we need to look at this from a systemic perspective and not necessarily hire guest workers from somebody else, but support the fact that when human beings do wages the way that Henry Ford said, they should be paid living wages so that they should be able to afford to buy the car that they build. Maybe they should be, you know, uh, uh, systemically we should look at these things. Uh, you also asked about the Zika funding. Absolutely public health is job one. Uh, the way that the Republican agenda, and I don't blame Republican voters, I don't blame people who ally themselves and ideologically say, I am a conservative, I'm a Republican. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the politicians who tell those voters one thing in district and go back to Washington and do something else. And the fact that they feel that it is acceptable to give tax breaks to these corporations and super rich landowners, but not to provide for the public health is just beyond belief to me. I don't understand how our country came to this. 
um, the Zika virus uh, and other things that uh, are incumbent on us, uh, even bark beetles and other things that are happening because of climate change, the change in our marine life, the change in our coral reefs. Um, these are things that are incumbent upon us as a civilized society to address and it just seems as though our leadership in Congress wants to stick their heads in the sand and say, oh no, that's not our problem. That's somebody else's problem. Let's blame somebody else for that. Well, and I, I don't know that there was one other issue. Well, you had three, but there's probably no time for it. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I, I get the sense that we could go on for quite some time with you, Wendy, um, and that would be fun. But unfortunately, we do have a time limit. So uh, we're going to have to wrap it up to, for today. Uh, we will be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. on Bakersfield.com with uh, City Councilman uh, woman Jackie Sullivan. That'll be an interesting conversation. Can't wait for that. So join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. And thank you so much, Wendy, for being there.